Hi everyone, welcome to the mini Bible lesson. Today, after a while, we'll be going through some Easter facts and tradition that probably you didn't know. Easter is one of the most ancient festivity in the world. Eradicated in different cultures during Easter, Christians commemorate deaths and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which he died for our sin, he shed his blood for us on the cross, and he suffered and suffered a lot. Imagine being passing through that pain and that hatred, and imagine being hated by everyone, and that everyone is causing your death, and that everyone wants you to die. Encouraging, encouraging people to hate you the more, and you know, striking you letting to pass pain and insulting you and everything. That is what our Lord Jesus Christ passed during these three great days. He suffered a lot, but he didn't suffer in vain. He suffered for our sins. He suffered for a purpose because he loved us so much to give his life, his own life. Okay, if I ask you a question now, let's take for example paraventrally you go outside and someone do you something bad and you'll be angry to that person right so would you think of giving or sacrificing something yours for that person no because you're still angry with that person okay so let's take it back to the scenario of jesus there was a lot of people that hated jesus there were a lot of people that made that could make jesus angry in many ways but he was never angry he was never angry. He gave his life. He gave his own life. His own, he had only 33 years, let's say, 33 years, as clearly stated. And at 33 years, he gave his own life. For what? For all the humanity. And not gonna lie, but like, if you tell a common person about like, would you give your life at your age now for all the humanity? They would kind of like laugh at you. But no, he gave his life. He didn't think about it. He just loved the humanity so much that he gave his own life. Jesus was bruised by our transgression. He was wounded by our iniquity. And by his stripes, we are healed. Jesus was so desperate that during his last hours, he reached that crucial point that he was questioning God if he had forsaken him. That is one of the most famous quotes of Jesus. Oh God, oh God, why have thou forsaken me? But at the same time, he knew what he had to do. He knew his, his, uh, his work in the world. Jesus knew he knew what he came to the world to do, to come and fulfill, to come and fulfill his job in the planet Earth, which was to save all the humans. So let's go back to the time that Jesus was on the cross. In his last words, he was questioning God if he had forsaken him, if he was the only person, if even he, God, has abandoned him. Because in this moment, all the humans didn't trust him. Even the same disciple, Peter, he betrayed him. Judah, he betrayed him. All the other disciples, they were too scared to defend him because they were scared of the consequences of the Romans. So he was the only one there in the cross, suffering for everyone. And it was everyone that was too scared to take his defense. So he was questioning God, if even God had abandoned him. But we know that our God is the mighty God and he never abandoned someone as is crying for help. Mostly his beloved son. He's a merciful God. And indeed, he saved Jesus through resurrection. So yeah, we're talking about resurrection. What is resurrection? If you search resurrection online, you can say the process of which is written in the Bible that someone has risen back to the dead, right? But in Christianity, we mean resurrection for many other things and many other ways, which can be resurrection in a spiritual way, 
not only physical way, it can be through a spiritual way, a day-to-day -day life, and everything that you do. Resurrection can mean a lot of things. If you resurrect in a spiritual way, in an emotive way, it does mean that you leave a status of which have been since and you change to another status, to another level that is usually positive. In Christianity, we mean it that way. And the biggest symbol of resurrection is the way Jesus died, which was on Good Friday. He was buried and on the third day he resurrected, which we celebrate now as Easter. And that passage, that, that, that way, that steps that he took and later he resurrected on Easter day. That resurrection is kind of a process, a process of change, a process of, of living that labor, of living that suffering and changing to an eternal life of peace, love and grace and happiness in God. So we can apply resurrection, the concept of resurrection in everything that we do. Let's take for instance, when your mom say you have to tidy up your room. So you have to tidy up your room. If we analyze that, we can say tidy up your room. That's mean the room was messed before. So your mom say you should tidy up your room so that your room will be arranged and it won't be in the status that it was before. So that's the way that you go and arrange the room. And so that is a process of you arranging a room. And the outcome of that process is the room not being messed anymore. So the room is tidied. That room is tidied and the room is beautiful. And that is a change that you make for not only your mom's choice, but even for your own choice. That choice that made you stand up and arrange your room, which that usually don't happen, but let's take it that way, to arrange your room, that change is crucial and it makes you reflect now the way how Jesus died, not just for any not, not for anything. You can't just die and just wake up out of nowhere. There must be something, there must be there must be a job, something to fulfill before you resurrect. That's why when we die, we don't just raise up and continue our normal life. And it's rare, very, very rare. So rare that we're celebrating Easter because the Messiah died and resurrected. That concept of resurrection is, is living that labor that you have as a sinner. Living all that dirt, all that, all that darkness down and rising up to the next level. So God saved us through resurrection. And we can see the passage of resurrection in Luke 24, verse 1 to 49. If you want to go and read it, it's a really good passage. Luke explained very well the concept of resurrection, more than Mark and the other apostles. There are many traditions around the event of Easter. And today we're going to focus mainly on Christian Easter. With few facts about Easter and the traditions. Have you ever asked yourself if there was a meaning to all of this Easter tradition? For example, Palm Sunday. You wake up in the morning and it's Sunday, you eventually go to church and the pastor say, Today is Palm Sunday. Oh, I'm kind of surprised. What is Palm Sunday? What is all this tradition? Why is there a Good Friday? Why is the Last Supper? Or why? Easter in this way. What does Easter change? We're going to go through some of this questions and we're going to explain this facts and figures for you guys. So listen up to the end and you can only get some answers to the question and have some views. Number one, Easter takes place on a Sunday after the 40 day period called Lent. So Lent is referred as a time of fasting, but participants of Lent, which are mainly Christians and minorities group, 
focus more on giving up significant indulgence. For example, let's make it more simple. During Lent, which might be 40 days previously this day, which is Easter, Lent might be, for example, the symbolize the 40 days that Jesus stayed in the desert. Desert, where he didn't eat for 40 days and 40 days. So, Christian fast, usually don't fast completely, or the fast have the choice to fast. Or Christians may be, uh, there's an option like you know, for example, if you have something that you're really affectionate with, Chocolates during that lens, I remove that chocolate so I prohibit myself to eat that specific food that I know I like to try to replicate that sorrow that Jesus had during the 40 days that he stayed in the desert. And Christian give up some simple items such as chocolates, while others do not eat meat, fish, eggs, or dairy. So it's your own choice to participate in the lens, to have a fasting. Some people don't even eat anything at all during the day. But it's really good to pass the Easter with this thing in mind to feel more closer to the suffering that Jesus suffered into the soul. Number two. So we are currently inside the last week of Easter today but during the past week from last Sunday the Palm Sunday till today that's Easter is a week called the Holy Week Holy Week reflect on these two words Holy Week there's not a lot of Holy Week during the year we have Christmas we have we have Pentecost but we don't really have a week a specific week called Holy Week Holy Week, there's some events happening during the Holy Week, which are, for example, which are stated for Palm Sunday, which is the day, first day of the Holy Week, and it's the day that Jesus arrived in Jerusalem. Monday, Thursday is the day of the Last Supper, which is the Thursday in which Jesus got arrested. And Good Friday is the day of Jesus' crucifixion and death. And later, we pass to the Sabbath yesterday. The Sabbath in the Jewish tradition is the is kind of like Sunday for Christian. And then we enter the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is Easter Sunday, which comes a huge celebration at the end of Lent, which means that fasting. It's feasting and treats, commemorating Jesus' resurrection and Jesus' sacrifice and Jesus' resurrected Related the forces of the enemies. We, we, we read that passage, so basically, we are getting purified, we're getting renewed. Number three, there are many symbols linked to Easter. The most common ones are the cross, eggs, rabbits, lambs, palm, palm fronds, and purple and red color. Well, let's focus on the Christian side of those symbols, which are cross. The cross. Jesus was crucified on a wooden cross. This symbolizes his death and resurrection. Lambs. Lambs. Lambs is represented. When you see, for example, the lamb, there's a song that says, the lamb upon the throne.
yes, it's that celebration of Jesus entering in Jerusalem as a king, as a glorious king, which that will be replicated at the same way in the resurrection. So basically, it's a preconcept of the resurrection. So the Bible is so it's so fantastic that it tells her already what will happen seven days later. So it tells us already that Jesus won't only die. He will resurrect in a glorious way. He will ascend to heaven and he will get a full welcome of all the angels, of the seraphs, of the caravans, of God himself, and sit on the right hand side of God in the glorious throne of heaven. And lastly, the purple and red color. Colors are the real recurrence of Christianity. In some like in some drawings of artists, we can see Jesus wearing red cloth clothes or purple clothes because it symbolizes Jesus as a king, as a royal. And purple and red color can be a sign of mourning over the death of Jesus Christ. Number four, the cross. There are some. Uh, there are some uh, cakes, kind of buns, that are recurrent in the United Kingdom, which are, are called uh, hot cross buns. And people eat them a lot, mostly during Easter, but they don't really know the real meaning of it. The cross on the hot cross buns, which is here somewhere, yeah, I'll show the image here, is there to remind us of Jesus. In his crucifixion and resurrection. So that's a really fun way how to find an interesting way how to remember Jesus in all the scene. So, resurrection is the answer to whether God, so whether God and good will triumph over evil. If our deepest mistakes will hold us back, and whether the hard times we encounter and what the efforts we put in. However, the resurrection is not possible without crucifixion. You can't pretend to be resurrected without not you pass you pass labor, without not you pass the stripes, without not you pass the suffering. When you feel that you're suffering, remember that someone suffered more than you, that someone is suffering more than you out there. And you have to retain yourself lucky. Even the person that suffered the most in this world I have to remember that there will always be someone that has to pass that crucifixion. That we are basically suffering for each of us. Each of us is suffering the, the sins of each other as Jesus did for everyone. Because we are following the example of Jesus as a Christian. We are following the example of sacrifice for the people. And following the example of the way he lived his life and the way he died for us on the cross. So, resurrection is not possible without no crucifixion. Without no a fighting spirits, you don't get the glory. If you don't have a fighting spirit, if you don't have a spirit that fights, that you that you fight those affliction, you fight those the barriers of the enemies in your life, you don't get the glory. You can't get that glory, you can't get that, that power at the end, that resurrection. We don't get we don't get to the experience, the strength of a new life and belonging until we've gone through the sorrow and suffering of the past. Jesus, remember that Jesus has been through it all before, and he can help us get through whatever we are going through right now. That hope is surely needed by someone you know. You're free to offer it to them. Share that hope to people. Give that hope to people, even though you don't specify that hope. Show that hope of Jesus, that glory of Jesus, that, that resurrection of Jesus in you, so that that resurrection can expand to all the people around us. Thank you very much for watching. 
and if you like this easter version of the mini bible lesson drop a like subscribe and share this video and for more content and if you know more easter facts write it down in the comments below thank you so much and enjoy your day until his star have one bye and later notice for my old subscribers sorry for being a little bit absent in the channel it's kind of like students i've been kind of busy and everything so but i will keep it on updating i haven't left you guys yet as you can see i'm i'm keeping on updating probably not regularly but yes i'll still be online i'm still alive yes so sorry if you've been worried and you've been asking where i've been but that way as life and everything but i will keep on working and keeping on giving you new videos about mini bible lesson so coming to visit my channel remember to subscribe share and comment below and i wish you happy easter to you subscribers all the new and make sure you enjoy easter and hope you got the message and hope i answer some questions and gave you some interesting facts if you know more easter facts write them down below in the comments and thank you for watching this video remember to share to people the no good news of easter and the way jesus resurrected from the grave and remember to be happy remember to celebrate easter with your family and with your loved ones thank you so much and bye